Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dean Blackman Show. And I'm your host, Dean. My special featured guest today in the studio is Jordan Pollock, who is a young filmmaker. Jordan is currently studying film at the Relativity School in Los Angeles, California. Relativity is a new school that specializes in film and digital content. He was in their second freshman class, which makes this endeavor very exciting as he is part of something new. The school's campus is on a professional movie studio lot. An entire faculty consists of people working in the film industry. It is everything an aspiring filmmaker could ask for. Though he is 3,000 miles from home, he knows it is where he belongs. Before leaving for LA, Jordan created an impressive body of work of short films, comedies, dramas, and documentaries that could all be seen on his Vimeo channel at vimeo.com slash Jordan Pollock Films. Jordan will talk about his development as a filmmaker, starting with using post, post-it pads to create flip books to stop motion animation, to silly movies with siblings, and neighborhood friends to the award-winning films created at Ward Melville High School. His final high school project, Our Boy Christopher, is a documentary that tells the story of Christopher Callahan, a student in his father's school who suffers from Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne is a debilitating disease that is progressive, has no treatment, and no cure. The film captures these struggles, but one could not be inspired by Christopher's parents as they do their best to allow Christopher to enjoy a normal childhood despite his disability. Our Boy Christopher was a Best Picture nominee at the 2015 All-American High School Film Festival Overall Picture. This festival had almost 3,000 entries from all over the world and under 500 selections, accentuating Jordan's accomplishment of being nominated for Best Picture. It is also a statement of the importance of this film. This film has recently reached 7,000 views on YouTube. Go to ourboychristopher.com to view the film. Jordan Pollack, welcome to the Dean Blackman Show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure to have you, Jordan. Um, I have, uh, this is the very first time um that i've got no one that i've had before that's not only so young 19 years old but uh, obviously you know that my children who are 32 and uh, 29 went through ward melville that uh, you're the very first uh filmmaker that uh, i've ever met at your young age and surely that's gone through the community through uh ward melville high school i find that uh unbelievably inspiring and very exciting thank you very much yeah you are really it's it's really remarkable what uh, what you've done and uh what was how did all that start i mean growing up when did you have an interest in in film um well when i was really little i uh i guess i just kind of had an interest in the uh stop motion animation with the little digital camera i had um the little figurines moving around um and then also with the post-its, with the drawing, little stick figures. Um, and I guess that kind of um, allowed me to be creative in telling little short stories, um, which I guess slowly I began to just love to tell short stories, short visual stories, which um, eventually uh, turned into you know live action stuff with the video camera. And just ever since then, I've been learning and taking it on, uh, you know, in the real world as best I can. At what age would you say that, uh, that started for you that you started to, to do this? I, I was in around, I think 
fourth grade, third grade, fourth grade, the post-its, um, and then around, you know, around probably sixth, seventh grade, I started using a real digital camera. Um, and then I was lucky to have a small elective film program in my high school um, where I was able to collaborate with other uh, young students interested in filmmaking um, and just really allow uh, my interest in film to grow. And, and I had great opportunities to be creative. Um, and I just, you know, kept falling in love with it. And now I'm at a school where I can do it and learn how to do it as a career. And um, it's, I, I love it. Before we get into that school, uh, sure. I mean, let's, let's still continue growing up. Uh, mm. I mean, as I told you, I don't, I don't remember ever meeting anyone as young as you and aspiring to be a filmmaker coming through uh, our community or anywhere. You're the very first. Uh, very interesting. Um, going through Ward Melville and the Three Village School District, are there much programs uh, in the school? Um, in the high school, there was um, there was a uh, there was a class called video production. Uh, it was really the only one uh, focused around uh, filmmaking. I mean, they had the high school has plenty of amazing art classes. Uh, um, but as you know, as far as film, we had this one teacher, Miss Di Lorenzo, who was amazing, um, and she really allowed kids to embrace any creative vision that they wanted, um, and you know, gave us access to different pieces of film equipment that we may need. Um, and she really prompted us to work together. Uh, and that was, you know, a way for everybody to kind of put their minds together. And, um, yeah. Terrific. Terrific. Um, at what point, I mean, you're growing up, uh, dad, uh, dad was a school teacher and, uh, for my listening audience, uh, Stuart Pollock, uh, Jordan's dad. You can see if you go to uh, the YouTube channel, he was uh, a guest last week uh, on the show. And I can't tell you how uh, proud your dad is of, uh, of you and your, your accomplishments. I mean, it's pretty impressive at 19 years of age of what you have accomplished up to this point. Thank you. And uh, to be a filmmaker... Uh, you have to be smart and uh, and really have a creative uh, vision. So, um, you know, at 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 what point, um, you know, if I was to ask you uh, why why didn't you go into teaching or another field? What was what was the reason? Um, I guess it was kind of thinking about all the different things that I may want to do when I was, um, you know, in junior high school, going into high school. Um, and I guess, you know, since as a kid, the filmmaking was really just a, my main hobby. Uh, it was always just a hobby. And then when I, when I learned that it could be a career, you know, that's something that I could really pursue. Uh, and it really just became real to me. I, I, I really think there was, um, it's a pretty obvious decision for me. Uh, I, I just never thought I could want to do anything else. Uh, even at a young age, I think maybe eighth or ninth grade, I knew from then that I wanted to go into filmmaking. Uh, I mean, this, you know, your generation or even my children's growing up, it was always, you know, passion was maybe to be a sports agent mm -hmm. or a, a teacher or accountant or in finance or in business or go to Wall Street. Uh, not too often do you meet uh, young people like you that want to be a filmmaker uh so i i ask you is there is there one person in the filmmaking industry that at some point in your life did that person inspire you uh to get into film was there anybody was there anybody in the world that inspired you well yeah uh i i guess um when i would watch movies as a kid and when i i mean when i still watch movies uh they movies have such a an interesting way of of reaching an audience and uh making them feel a certain way um through their story through the sto uh you know the story of of the film as well as um all the elements like the music 
the camera work, um, the writing, of course, uh, they all have, um, you know, a part in making a person feel a certain way. Um, and when I would watch these directors uh, make these movies that I just fell in love with, uh, movies that would make me cry, like, of course, Forrest Gump, uh, and movies that would make me laugh. Even, great, great movie, Forrest yeah. Gump. <laughs> um, and movies that would make me laugh, like um, <laughs> like Pulp Fiction, even though it's not necessarily a, a comedy. Um, or well, I guess it's a, kind of a dark comedy. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I just loved that you could tell a story, uh, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, like a documentary, um, that you could just make an audience feel a certain way, uh, re, uh, you know, hone in on their emotions, um, and have them leaving, uh, have them lean, excuse me, have them leaving, uh, the viewing of your film, uh, feeling, you know, differently than they did when they walked in or, um, being, inspired about something or learning something and leaving more knowledgeable uh after watching your film knowing that you could be somebody to make an impact in their life right. uh you know so i guess somebody that uh would inspire me probably uh wes anderson or quentin tarantino cool are both um cool yeah and favorite film of all time one or two favorite films besides forrest gump <laughs> well uh I'd say of all time, Star Wars is definitely, wow. Wow. Uh, you know, like the original three when I was a kid, uh, they were they were the first movies I ever saw. And so to me, it was just this fantastic universe. Um, and I even though they were old, I had no idea what a movie could be or so, you know, they've always kind of had a special place in my heart. Um, I mean, I also like The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou by Wes Anderson. Um, I just think he's a brilliant storyteller. Um, and that movie is just great on a whole level. Awesome, awesome movies, mm -hmm. awesome movies. Why don't we, before we get into our boy Christopher, uh, and, and before we get into relativity school, um, why don't we talk about uh, some of the films that you have done to date? Sure. Um, when I was in elementary school, I would just pick up the camera one day um, and go to my siblings and we'd just kind of figure it out and I would tell them what to do and they would love to be in it and act and it would just be, you know, 45 seconds to a minute and a half long little little films. Um, I made this film Jody's Space uh, okay. and that was, you know, I had made a couple other short films that I would take it more seriously and really pay attention to the angles, kind of pay attention to the light um the story uh but i'd say jody's space was the one that i really felt myself transition into you know a, like a real student filmmaker cool. um cool uh yeah i really pay, i really paid attention to um you know i i and up until this point too i had done my research uh you know watch youtube videos on how certain things work and um because I, I, I pretty much self-taught when it comes to the filmmaking stuff. Um, you know, as far as technical things, I, you know, I researched stuff. I just played around with the camera. And um, yeah, so it was at that point that I felt like I, you know, I'd made this, this film, this student film that I could enter into a, a student filmmaking competition. And um, yeah, that was, you know. <laughs> Terrific. Let's, let's now move on to college. Sure. I mean, um, here you were graduating Ward Melville High School. You're 19 years old today. Tremendous. Um, uh, I'm still sitting here, uh, honored sitting with a filmmaker. <laughs> and I think you're going to have much success uh, in the future. Thank you. Very impressed with what you've done to date. But uh, let's, let's, let's let the audience hear relativity school mm -hmm. out in LA is new to me and mm -hmm. it's and it is a new school I think it's what in its second year yeah this fall will be its third you're you were in their first freshman year class is that correct I was their second freshman year uh so you know yeah so there was one year above me um so as you're getting ready to approach uh you know 11th grade at your as as kids do they start thinking about what schools they're going to apply to what they're going to do mm -hmm. uh how did 
how did you going to LA to the Re Relativity School of Film? Uh, how did that evolve? How did it happen? And if you could tell the audience about the school, Re Relativity. Sure. Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. Um, I wasn't even thinking about applying there until uh, I think a couple days after, before the deadline um, because I had gone to, it was my first year at the All-American Film Festival in 11th grade um, and I had entered my film and there was something wrong with the sound um, and in the theater that it was played in, one of the speakers were out and um, some of the audio uh, some of the dialogue rather wasn't wasn't being played so you couldn't hear what some of the characters were saying and so the people who ran the festival felt really bad um, and they wanted to make it up to me so they had you know my film didn't win anything whatever it was just awesome to uh, see it in the in a movie theater with you know an audience um, responding to it um, and so just you know because they felt bad that uh, it had technically there were some technical problems in the in the screening they played it at the winner's reel on the last day. And um, the president of Relativity School was there um, at that screening. And my dad and I bumped into him outside. And he, I mean, we just got into a, I'd say it was like an hour long conversation with him. Um, you know, he told me he, he liked my film. Um, and we talked about the school, Relativity School, which at that point was, I don't think in their first year, uh, I don't want, don't hold me to that, but uh, you know, their first year was when I was in twelfth grade, so um, this was before that. Um, so, wait, no, that that you know what? That, I take it back. This was actually the beginning of twelfth grade, okay, not eleventh grade, okay, because um, I had made the film that I had entered in eleventh grade, whatever. Okay, so <laughs> fall of my senior year, so they had just started their first year at Relativity. And he was telling me about it. Um, and I mean, from there, he he had almost pretty much sold it, sold me on it. And I, I mean, I had no interest in applying whatsoever. And so a couple of days later, my dad scheduled a visit to Los Angeles for us to go. Um, and I visited it and I saw the campus. Well, the studio lot, it's it's. A, yeah, it's my it's my understanding that the campus is right on a Hollywood studio. Yeah, that it, must have been exciting. It It, it was very it was definitely a lot to take in when I first stepped on for my visit. Um, it's really not like any other camp. I mean, it's literally, it's not just a, <laughs> like the school itself is just a small part of an already existing studio lot that's in downtown Los Angeles. Um, it's called Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles Center Studios. Um, and I mean, there are just working professionals, there are production companies that rent out the sets there because, you know, there are, are a bunch of sets um, on the studio lot. And so all of the sets that are part of the studio, the school um, allows their, uh, or they coordinated it with the studio that their students can use any of the sets for free, which um, is really, I mean, I, I don't know, it's something that I've never, <laughs> I've never thought I could well, I mean, I, I never well, pictured myself going to a school in well, a real studio. Well, lot. think think about it. Mm -hmm. How many how many eighteen year old kids starting their college process? I've never met anyone <laughs> that uh, went off to college and went to a school to study film and uh, to be on campus at a Hollywood studio. I mean, that sounds like a dream. It definitely feels sometimes like it's a dream. <laughs> I mean, we have to, there are some days where we have to um, find different ways to our classes because uh, parts of the lot are blocked off for filming. So we'll have to, you know, go around these long hallways and into a side elevator and underground up another elevator uh, just to avoid going like across the street of the lot um, <laughs> because they're shooting uh, a, like a car exploding or. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a really fun way to learn how to become a filmmaker while you're kind of immersed in this world, this world of professional filmmaking. Um, it's, it's definitely a different, but really, really interesting experience. Uh, I mean, how many, how many children do, does admissions accept every year to relativity? Um, I, I'm not, the, the thing is, is, um, it kind of 
it's it kind of varies or it's a little different because like i mean is it hundreds or a thousand it's not i mean the my in my well in my freshman film class there were only 19 kids wow and then you got to be kidding me no 19 yeah wow um but in the entire school there's also a there's also an acting department um and a dance commercial dance um and so out of all three programs film well film and digital content uh acting for film and digital content and uh, commercial dance there were 89 kids total last year uh, or approximately 89 uh, in the entire school uh, including both years so yeah it's definitely interesting to go to a school with such so your yeah. your so your first year mm-hmm. your first year that you got selected to attend relativity you were one of how many in your freshman class around 89 oh in my freshman class yes. oh uh probably around 60 something wow so very very few and yeah there must there must have been you know hundreds or thousands of people kids trying to get into the school that year um I'm I'm not sure uh, only because I know that definitely the first year I think they I'm not sure how many applicants they had only because uh, it was you know it was just starting out um, but it it, it increased tremendously the, the year I was applying um, I don't know exact numbers uh, but this year I know that that over thousands of kids uh, are applying and uh, yeah I'm I'm not sure how many. They've accepted. Uh, I'm excited to go back and see and meet a whole bunch of the new people. Um, so how, yeah. as far as a difference from other film schools that you could have chosen to go to, other colleges or film schools, how how is Relativity different? Relativity is very different um, because they, well, first off, the whole studio lot thing uh, is, is, is one thing that, you know, is very different. Um, but their classes are... Our, like our, our the faculty and the staff is very um they're very in tune with what we want the yeah. students have their voice is very powerful uh because there are so few of us that uh you know our, our, the administrators are very they really want to know what we think and they're very interested in hearing how we um are responding to the way that they've set things up. And so, you know, we may not like something and we come together kind of as a group of students and we'll talk to, you know, the administrators and they're very open to changing things and um, trying new things uh, because, you know, they're, they're in a, a new school, so they have to know what works and what doesn't work. Um, and since there aren't that many of us, um, you know, we all kind of work together to make things work for everybody. And um, I think that's, I just think it's great to, you know, be in an environment that where they care so much about how we want to go about our education. And of course they know they are trying, uh, they try things that they think are best for us. And, um, um, the teachers also are, are very like, and, and they're all working professionals in the industry. And, you know, I know a bunch of other schools, a lot of the people are very experienced working professionals. Um, but it's very interesting, you know, like my, director my directing teacher couldn't come in one day because he was doing something i mean he directs episodes of the middle and uh about a boy and uh he's he just comes in and talks to us about directing and it's very you know it's conversational almost like he likes to know what we think um and you know all the teachers are very interested in like how we feel about uh what the work they've given us and something that one of my teachers said, which I just thought was fantastic was, um, one of my, uh, friends in my screenwriting class and it was a screen, uh, it was a class of about nine kids, which is great because, uh, you really hear the voices of everybody and the, the screenplays that everybody's written. And, um, you get, you get to really hear what people think about your work in depth because, mm. you know, there are so few people. And, uh, but anyway, so he said, one of my students, uh, I mean, one of my fellow classmates uh, in, um, had messed something up on this quiz about how to f- properly format a screenplay. And she said, oh, I didn't put fade in at the top, which is, you know, something you do. Um, and she said, oh, do I get points off? Uh, and he said, well, 
do you know to write fade in at the top of a screenplay? Wow. And she said, yeah. And then he said, so why should you care about the points you get for it? Wow. You know? And so it's that kind of attitude that I think is what makes relativity such an awesome place to learn. And um, it's that kind of attitude that inspires me um, and something that really works for me as a student. Um, you know, everything, you know, different places work for different people. Um, and that's one of the main reasons why I love it. And I can't wait to go back. Um, and yeah, it's just that, that that type of learning environment has really. Well, you surely, fantastic. you surely are inspirational and that's why I have you in it, <laughs> on this show today because, you. uh, you know, besides, uh, anyone having an opportunity to be here on the show, it doesn't matter what age you are, uh, as long as you've got a great story to tell and, uh, if there's some education, inspiring, and some uh, some humor to go along with it, uh, you could be on the show. But uh, I know that you're going back to L.A. soon. Dad thought it would be a great opportunity for us to get together. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important now uh, to focus on just an incredible journey. You had a great piece of work, uh, something that uh, still brings chills and tears to my eyes. Thank you. Each time I watch it, it's just an incredible documentary, uh, Jordan Pollock, that you, that you did. <laughs> Thank and, you so much. Uh, I hope the listening audience uh, really goes to it. You've been nominated for a number of awards uh, for the project. And that's about uh, Christopher Callahan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's my first time being ex exposed to, if I'm pronouncing it right, if I'm not, Please correct me, but uh, Duchenne muscular uh, dystrophy, is that uh, correct? Uh, it's actually uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne mm -hmm. muscular uh, dystrophy. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's very, it's very technical, um, but uh, this little boy, Christopher Callahan, the uh, little young boy, what's his age now today? Uh, he just turned 10 years old. 10 years old. Yeah, we, um, um, that's who uh, the character is about. It's a documentary. And, uh, you know, it's really an unbelievable story of love, perseverance, and hope that this, gen uh, you know, terrible degenerative disease that is uh, basically joined a death sentence. Um, it's new to me. I've never heard of it before until I met you and uh, had a chance to watch your unbelievable documentary. Um, but the inspiration, not only of you at your young age as a filmmaker to pick a subject like this, but uh, the Callahans, they have, uh, the two of them come through uh, with just uh, tremendous love, perseverance, and hope that uh let's let's just stay focused on this a, a little bit i know it's very technical we mm -hmm. don't have a doctor on with me but i did <laughs> my my own research sure. on duchenne muscular dystrophy and it's my understanding uh, maybe you could even help in lay terms a little bit more sure but it's my understanding that this is a uh, x-linked recessive form of muscular dy dystrophy affecting around you know, one in 3,600 boys, which results in uh, muscle degeneration and premature death, uh, that this disorder is caused by a mutation in the gene dystrophin located in the human X chromosome, mm -hmm. which codes for a protein called dystrophin. And that the symptoms uh, usually start around age one through three, children difficulty walking, running, jumping, uh, climbing stairs, and uh, just a uh, horrific, dreadful, dreadful disease that, uh, that this is the very first time that I'm even, I'm even hearing about this. Uh, you know, I just want to say also to the listening audience, I don't know if I said this earlier, that... Uh, that uh, little Christopher is a student at the same school that Jordan's dad, who was on last week, um, is the principal. So uh, how, how did this documentary, um, how did this documentary uh, come about? Why? Um, well, in my film 
in the elective film class that I was taking at uh, Ward Melville High School, um, we we uh, we were requ- uh, excuse me we were required to make a documentary um, in the third quarter of the school um, of the school year, and you know I was browsing ideas. Uh, I was thinking what I wanted to do, and I had something clicked and I had remembered, uh, cause you know, I would go into my dad's office every now and then, um, if we were, you know, um, and you know, he had told me about Christopher, um, and his, uh, his disease. Um, and you know, I, I just was thinking about how it could be not only an opportunity for me to do this project for school, but to do something, you know, to do, to make use my abilities as a filmmaker to make something for the Callahan family, uh, as well as something to raise awareness for such an unbelievably horrible disease, uh, especially one that really not that many people know about. Um, you and, know, I comp- I compare it to uh, as if someone was getting pancreatic cancer. I mean, uh, this is just a horrific uh, disease. Uh, yeah, it's. It, it you know in my opinion it really is one it really is one of the worst uh and you know a lot of people don't i mean a lot of people really don't know what it is and that uh the fact that uh well i just the 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 rareness of the disease uh, uh you know it it there's still the people families struggle every day um financially you know as well as emotionally obviously but the problem is that, you know, the drug companies, like the, you know, the FDA, people fight the advocates, the, the advocates for the disease. Um, Pat Furlong, who comes up in the documentary, actually speaks in the documentary. Um, she started Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, which is um, probably probably the most influential um, of the advocates for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, uh, and they press they. They press uh, for these drug testing and these um, uh, uh, things to get the FDA to approve certain drugs. Because, you know, like the Callahans are paying out of pocket. They have to pay out of pocket for some of these medications for Christmas. Because they're not FDA approved drugs. Yeah. And um, it's something that is has been, they've been, pre- the uh, Parent Project MD has been pressing for, you know, more research for years and years. Um, and it's slowly, slowly making progress, but there are, it's just, it's unbelievable what these families go through financially just to take care of their child. Yeah, just terrible. And they, you know, the Callahans fly to Cincinnati. Uh, well now they drive, uh, but you know, that they go to Cincinnati all the way there to go to the number one hospital for Duchenne. Um, and you know, it's just one of those things that, I mean, as if the emotional uh, yeah. struggle was enough. There. I told you I was uh, in tears, uh, yeah. in tears watching your documentary. Uh, it was just uh, very emotional. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible that here you were a senior in high school at Ward Melville, that uh, such a subject that you picked to do a documentary at, upon graduation and moving forward with relativity. It's amazing that you picked such a... Um, very deep, intense um, subject to do a film on, a documentary. Thank you. Um, it's re- it's really rem- remarkable. Thank you very much. The- um, you you had mentioned mm-hmm. uh, you had mentioned to me that there was footage that was um, that was credited to someone else mm-hmm. in the documentary. Uh, tell us about uh, that process. Um, yeah. The um, well, basically, as far as that uh, you know that that process of uh having to reach out to the other filmmakers uh, who uh, made some of the some of what I used in the documentary was um well it was part of the it was on the Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy website so I went through that and you know I had contacted Pat Furlong already um and who's by the way an unbelievable woman uh, one of the most inspiring people um. And when you see her in the documentary, uh, she just, you know that she knows exactly what she's talking about when it comes to this and how 
more people need to listen to her and her organization um, and learn about it. <laughs> um, and uh, sorry, uh, but basically, I you know I reached out to them and talked about I asked them about who made the video um, that they had used, and so from there I went to the filmmakers and they just they were like just take it use it use it for you know and they are also people who were advocating for Duchenne awareness and so um, I guess part of that you know we had a little connection and we were just trying to. I mean, they were just all for it, and I just took it, used it, credited them. Great. And Great. Uh, yeah, it really, you know, everyone, I, the community, um, you know, specifically the Duchenne community that, you know, Rosaline and uh, Chris, um, they, it's it's really unbelievable what the people do for each other. Um, and, you know, Rosalie, she, the way that she reaches out to, other families with Duchenne, the way that uh, she, the attitude that she has is just unbelievable. Uh, and she and Chris are absolutely inspiring. Um, well, as I, as I said early, mm -hmm. the, the documentary is such a story of love and perseverance mm -hmm. and hope. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, once again, if uh, to my listening audience, uh, for everyone to go to your documentary, why don't you tell 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 my audience what they have to do or where they have to go to sure. to view to view this uh, documentary, which is uh, about uh, a nice little boy uh, by the name of Christopher Callahan, mm -hmm. and it's the documentary is called "Our Boy Christopher." Why don't you tell them where they have to go to uh, to view the documentary? Sure, um, there is there is a copy on my Vimeo channel. Um, at uh, vimeo.com slash Jordan Pollock Films. Um, however, there's also the actual website that uh, we have for, it's called ourboychristopher.com. And um, I would actually go there for the documentary because there is more information about um, um, the kind of the, you know, we have like a donation. Um, there's a donation option mm -hmm. for, uh, uh, for Christopher and the Callahan family. Um, and there's, there's short things you could read, um, kind of explaining certain aspects, um, about, you know, parent project muscular dystrophy, um, about the disease itself. Um, and there's, you know, and there's also the link to the full documentary. The full documentary is about 36 minutes and yeah, you can access it right on the website, ourboychristopher.com. What's if people want to if the audience wants to look at some of your other work and future work, uh, where do they go to? Um, same, just my uh, just my Vimeo channel. Uh, yep, and if you search me in Vimeo to V I M E O, uh, just Jordan Pollock, uh, it should come up. What's amazing about Christopher when you look at the documentary? There's nothing stopping him. He does whatever basically he wants to do in life and his parents just have tremendous strength and mm -hmm. you know there was in the documentary playing hockey even yeah that was a great mm -hmm. uh, that was so unbelievable yeah that that was one that was definitely something to see uh you know was uh yeah, as a filmmaker seeing uh what the parents what Rosalie and Chris will do for their child um i mean it's a degenerative disease it, it's a, it's the most degenerative form of muscular dystrophy and it's such an at such a young age it's i mean it's something that's very heavy um and the attitude that rosalie and chris have is i i it inspires me every single day they say that they just want christopher to have a normal life and even though the more you know the more active he is the more degenerative it could be you know they don't want him to not live um, and not do the things that he wants to do and that will make him be a kid. Um, and they, you know, they just, the, every decision that they make is for the best of their, of their child, Christopher. And, you know, he's still, you know, he needs a wheelchair. Um, and, uh, you know, um, but his, I mean, his father, Chris, uh, when he was in school before he, you know, he needed the wheelchair. He built, uh, he built a scooter for him, a little scooter, a motorized scooter that he would ride around the school, and he put 
flames on it and he had a cool helmet with spikes uh and i mean chris built it and he you know getting a patent on it and uh, or, uh trying to and i mean it's just the things that he would do technically uh for christopher especially around the house like he they they got into the house and there were stairs a couple steps into uh between like the i don't know the bedrooms and the downstairs like just a few and chris uh, chris was just like nope and they rebuilt i mean pretty much the whole house i mean in the documentary he talks about it and uh you know they were living outside in a tent uh in the backyard while while amazing, it was under construction amazing people yeah he built a ramp he was you know uh in the front and the back um they have a chairlift everything like they they just there isn't a single thing that they didn't make sure Christopher he came had. you know Chris came through that uh if uh, if I'm not going to be able to play baseball or football and play out in the backyard with my son, uh, he's going to make sure that as his dad, uh, mm -hmm. that he's going to give him the best quality of life that he could bring Absolutely. him. And that, that came out in your documentary. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's incredible. Thank you. It's incredible that I sit here with you, that a young man uh, at 18 years of age, not only an aspiring filmmaker, but no longer aspiring, but an actual filmmaker. <laughs> and that at 18 years of age, a senior in high school, that you wrote and produced and directed and, you know, such a sensitive, intimate topic as this uh, disease. You Pretty know, remarkable. You know, so, I think if I, uh, I, I want to thank you for saying that really, um, except um, as much as, you know, I look at it as a documentary that I made and something that I'm very proud of, you know, as a filmmaker. Um, I, the the story that Rosalie and Chris were able, I mean, it's that it's just them talking. It's their story. They provided me with the content. Um, and I just put it in a way that I thought, you know, looked pretty and worked structurally. But, the, you know, they are the storytellers in this documentary. I mean, you know, I I did my thing, but they what they have to say is truly truly the most inspiring part of what wow. I feel wow. my, you know, my part of it was uh which was working with them and you know, the process as a filmmaker, the process of going to their house, getting to know them, making them comfortable around me um was something as as a filmmaker I've never had to do uh, and it's a completely new experience for me. And I, you know, I had to, before I could even get the camera down there with Christopher, I mean, I, I was sitting down there, we were just playing Xbox and playing with his action figures, uh, for the first couple of days, I couldn't even take my camera out. Uh, and then process wise, like they, I really had to connect. I had to, you know, build this relationship with this family and it, you know, it became more than just telling their story. It was, you know, getting to know them building a relationship with them and being fortunate enough to document it and then share it with other people so they can see what an inspiring family they are and, you know, learn more about Duchenne muscular dystrophy. That's and, why, yeah. that's why your parents raised you well, that <laughs> uh, besides being an unbelievable creative genius, <laughs> which you are, Thank you. that uh, I see how intimate uh, this topic was and the interpersonal way about yourself, what you were dealing with. You weren't just dealing with making a film and a documentary here. You, what you had to do, this, this very personable, terrible, dread, dreadful disease that Christopher had, uh, everything that you had to deal with in dealing with Christopher, his parents and people mm -hmm. around him, uh, I can only imagine how challenging uh, that was, but you know, I could see someone. That's why I said you were raised well by mom and dad. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> what's what's next for you as far as your future and filmmaking? What could you share with us uh, that's next? Um, I uh, you know, I I do I I love to write. I love to write fiction and um, creative writing. So I always want to be writing something. Um, but you know, I there are different jobs uh here and there that um i'll be looking at and you know uh, in in the film industry um i hope to do a lot of my own stuff 
uh, if I can, you know, with proper funding and, uh, you know, I'm making connections right now at my school. Um, and I, you know, further, I'm going to be increasing those connections around the, you know, different parts of Los Angeles. And I just hope to meet certain people. Um, and with people that I meet and people that I already know, uh, just produce content that people can enjoy. And I think one of the most important things about filmmaking is that we or I am part of a community of people that tell stories in many different ways. And, you know, people, audiences, no matter how big, gather to watch it. And I think that there's a responsibility there um, as a filmmaker that, you know, we really have the potential to impact an audience in, in, in a way is more than just having them enjoy a story. Uh, and that's kind of what I try to do with Our Boy Christopher, um, which is, you know, you can use your talent, you can use uh, the, you know, the equipment you have available to you and make something really cool to watch. And, you know, I mean, I want to be, I want to make fictional stories, fun, uh, you know, movies, but, you know, I also want to make sure that I uh, am still reaching out to people um, and showing them things that can change their life uh, and hopefully teach them about things uh, that they didn't know about before, specifically things like, you know, you're a beautiful, muscular dystrophy. You're a beautiful person. You're a great human being. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? If I had a bet on the future, if I had a bet on the future that uh, I think there's going to be a few appearances in your life at the Academy Awards, <laughs> and I think you I have so. uh, a few Oscars uh, ahead of you. I, re I really do. Thank you. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> so um, I do. I do want to. Ex as we close, I want to wish you. I want to wish you the very best as you go out to L.A. and back to Relativity. And I hope uh, you keep in touch with me. Sure. Okay. You're welcome here on the show anytime you'd like. I mean, my listening audience has to understand that my guest today is Jordan Pollock, <laughs> uh, filmmaker, not aspiring filmmaker, but proven filmmaker at 19 years of age. And I, I think you've done a hell of a show here with me today. Well, thank you very much. You're, you're uh, a very, very a very, a very difficult one on a very, um, very uh, challenging and emotional uh, topic that mm. you uh, have already been an award winner <laughs> on this documentary. I also want, I hope they're listening out there, Rosalie and Chris mm. uh, uh, Callahan, I hope, they're, I hope they're listening. And I, if they're not, I'd like you to personally uh, pass on that Dean Blackman would like to meet them. Sure. I'd surely love to meet little Christopher. Sure. Uh, they have a welcome to be on the Dean Blackman show and to use my show to talk more about uh, this uh, this uh, terrible disease. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just want to thank you very much for for being here today. So uh, in closing, uh, have a great trip to L.A. Thank you. I want to thank uh, say hi to mom and dad. Sure. OK, because sure. dad's always welcome on the show. <laughs> But I, uh, I want to hear from all our listeners that uh, all our listeners can reach out to us with uh, the free text number for U.S. residents, which is 631-372-8849. That's 631-372-8849. We'd love to hear from all of you. Include your name and location, and we will mention you on the show. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and hit the subscribe button on the show's YouTube channel. If you would like to leave a comment, use the box below. If you'd like to share your story, ideas, and be a guest on the show, go to deanbleckman.com and email me. I would like to thank all of my listeners for being with us today. Until next time, have a great day. You've been listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.